Well, good evening, Levine Baptist Church. It is five o'clock. We are now officially into April. It's just a beautiful time of year right now. And I am excited to be in the house of the Lord. I'm really excited for tonight. I mean, I love coming here anyway. But um, what we get to do tonight in, in the ordination of new deacon, and particularly this young man, I've known him for almost the entire time I've been here. Uh, he and, and his wife were regular attenders of my Sunday school class for a long time. Then I had the privilege and honor of being able to officiate at his wedding, and now he's going to be ordained as a deacon. And um, I'm not his dad. I got to meet his dad. His dad was a fantastic guy. But, man, I'm, I'm going to be the stand-in proud guy tonight because, man, I am just thrilled with what's going on there. But welcome back. Um, it's just We just have a fantastic evening planned. We're going to start off with worship. We're going to be hearing from the pastor. Boy, that message this morning, if you weren't here, what, what a powerful, powerful reminder um, about what we need to be doing in that rejoicing thing. Amen? Amen. Pretty, pretty incredible. Let me open up with this passage out of, out of, the, out of the psalm, Psalm 62, verses 5 through 8. Rest in God alone, my soul, my, for my hope comes from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold. I will not be shaken. My salvation and glory depend on God, my strong rock. My refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your hearts before him. God is our refuge. And man, if that doesn't cause you to rejoice, I don't know what is, knowing that that God is our refuge. So, Caesar, let's worship him, shall we? Amen. How about we stand and let's praise and worship the Lord? It's a great honor to have uh, Audrey. Her sheik was singing before, and it's great to have her here again. It's always good to have young talent here.
So a couple of announcements for us. Thank you so much for coming back again tonight to celebrate this amazing occasion, uh, to see what the Lord has done in Eric's life. Uh, we've got to see a wonderful man of God, and we're thankful for that man who has been serving in this position uh, for quite some time now without being in this position. That's what the men are looking for, is that men who are serving, who are loving, who are leading, and Eric is doing a great job already at that, and he will continue on. So thanks for coming here tonight for that. A couple of announcements for us this week is Blood Drive, and then next Sunday, so a week from now, is a Youth Lunch Fundraiser. Uh, Produce on Wheels had 156 families come through, so praise God, that's awesome. Uh, that's a wonderful, uh, wonderful opportunity for our uh, ministry to our uh, neighborhoods and to our families around. Uh, the rest of them are in here. Make sure you pay attention to them. Ladies Fellowship Night is this, uh, this Friday, excuse me. And if you have any uh, desire to help with Easter breakfast, uh, Dana needs some help uh, in many areas, but well, definitely the kitchen area. <laughs> So make sure that you help him out, help a brother out there, and make sure that it goes well. Why don't you join me as we go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we love you. We thank you, Father, for who you are. Lord, that we can, we can come to this place rejoicing, God, because of lives transformed. And God, it's solely by your grace that we're here today celebrating the transformation in the life of Eric. This, uh, this calling to which you called him to to this office of deacon, Lord. He's been a servant here at our church for quite some time. And Lord, I'm, I'm thankful for this opportunity here, for him to be able to step on and to, to take a, uh, some leadership role here and to be able to faithfully serve our congregation, their families, and our, um, our neighborhood as a whole, God. We love you, Lord. We thank you so much. We pray your blessings over him and over his family. Uh, especially in this time, he's been talking about how he's seen the enemy at work in his life and trying to be able to deter him from this. And Lord, I'm thankful that you've sustained him. I'm thankful that you continue to sustain us whenever the enemy attacks, God. We, Lord, we know, Lord, that you are our firm foundation as we sung about this morning. You are the rock on which we stand. There is no other rock. And Lord, that is what is, keeps us firm and unshakable is the fact that not we are the rock, but you are the rock, God. Help us to rest in you. Help us to trust in you. Amidst the, the, uh, the headaches and heartaches of life, through those moments we don't want to rejoice, help us to choose joy and to choose to rest in you, God, knowing that you have all things under control and you, Lord, are working things out for our good and for your glory, Lord. Help us trust that. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
joy, worship you and praise you, Father. We thank your name, Jesus. Amen. Shall we remain for just standing for just a moment in the honor of the reading of God's word? In uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3, 8 through 13 tonight, we see these words. Deacons likewise must be dignified, not double-tongued, not addicted to much wine, not greedy for dishonest gain. They must hold the mystery of the faith with a clear conscience and let them also be tested first, then let them serve as deacons. If they prove themselves blameless, their wives likewise must be dignified, not slanderers, but sober-minded, faithful in all things. Let deacons each be the husband of one wife, managing their children and their own households well. For those who serve well as a deacon gain good standing for themselves and also great confidence in the faith that is in Christ Jesus. You may be seated. I'm going to spend just a little bit of time and talk about deacons from Scripture and what it says about uh, the office of the deacon. Deacons, it's a word that means different things to different people. In my life, I have been so privileged to have been raised by a dad who was also a deacon, so I understand their role and what they do. And I got to see what being a good deacon was all about. I saw first what it meant to be a deacon. It had nothing to do with position. A lot of people think that when you're a deacon, well, you have arrived at a certain important position. It is an important thing in the church, but it is not uh, something that you would see as, you know, I'm I'm now a little bit elevated, I guess. Uh, Our deacons know that well. We have a great bunch. And they know what it is to be a deacon. They, they serve as deacons. But it has nothing to do with position and everything to do with serving. A deacon is quite simply a servant, according to Scripture. In the book of Acts 6, uh, chapter 6, 1 through 8, we read these words. Now in these days when disciples were increasing in number, a complaint by the Hellenists arose against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. And the twelve summoned the full number of disciples and said, it is not right that we should give up preaching the word of God to serve tables. Therefore, brothers, pick out from among you seven men of good repute, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we will appoint to this duty, but we will devote ourselves to prayer and the ministry of the word. And what uh, they said pleased the whole gathering, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the the Holy Spirit, and Philip, and Procurus, and Nicanor, Timon, Perminus, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. These they set before the apostles, and they prayed and laid their hands on them, and the word of God continued to increase The number of disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests became obedient to the faith. And Stephen, full of grace and power, was doing great wonders and signs among the people. We see in in this passage, it speaks to us about the selection of seven men. These were men who were chosen to serve. These original seven men were, as we see, very special individuals. Our deacons are very special individuals here because they encourage people. When people have needs and, and uh, you know, they, they go and they sit with them, they talk with them, they uh, counsel with them. And so um, they, they're a great asset to a church. Um, these were men who were chosen to serve. The original seven men were, as we see, very special individuals. Understand at this point what that means. Notice what the Scripture says about these men. Seven men just who are of good reputation, Acts chapter 6, verse 3. Men of integrity whose character and conduct are a testimony to those around them. Men of good reputation are those who are 
full of the Holy Spirit. Remember the command found in Ephesians 5 and verse 18. Um, It's not necessarily aimed at deacons alone. Uh, It is for all of us as believers. But in in Ephesians 5 and verse 18, we see these words. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is uh, debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. It does apply to deacons in a special way. But be filled with the Spirit. Be the, be ye being continually filled is what it's talking about that, controlled by the Holy Spirit. Not only are these men full of the Holy Spirit, but they are also full of wisdom. Uh, A deacon must uh, be able to approach a difficulty and do it with wisdom. Proverbs 9 and 10 tells us that the fear of the Lord, most of you probably have read this verse, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is insight. Um, This is the beginning place. This man is a man who is full of wisdom. His attitude about God is a recognition of God's greatness. He holds God in a place of reverence and awe. God has a special place in the life of this individual. He is a man full of wisdom. He is, in other words, a man who knows how God wants things done. Uh, Because wisdom is simply the knowing of how God wants it done and going and doing it. That's why Acts 6 verses 1 through 3 says they are men who can be appointed over the business of the church. Acts chapter 6 uh, verses 1 through 3. And in these days when the disciples were increasing in numbers, A complaint by the Hellenists arose against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. And the twelve summoned the full number of disciples and says, It is not right that we should give up preaching the word of God to serve tables. Therefore, brothers, pick out from among you seven men of good repute, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we will appoint to this duty. They are servants, first of all appointed over, at times, the business of the church. That's what they were having here. There were some, um, some folks who were the widows and they were being neglected and so they needed deacons to go and deal with this. If men are going to be chosen to do things God's way, to handle His business, it makes sense to have these kind of men. Notice verse 6. Uh, I'm in chapter 6 of Acts, first part of verse 8. And Stephen, full of grace and power, was doing great wonders and signs among the people. Um, Stephen, who was one of the seven chosen, he was a man who was full of grace, a man full of God's power. That word perhaps should begin to get our attention. These are not men of limited commitment. These are men who in every sense of the word, are full of our Lord. They are full of God as they walk through life. He, he has, uh, he's using them by His power. So what do you do with men like this? This is a truth that much of the church needs to grasp. You choose them to serve. Appoint them to places where they can be servants uh, to others. The reason being, a person will not consider this position of servant, serving others around them with a good attitude and with enthusiasm, serving as unto the Lord. A person won't do it unless the above-mentioned characteristics are true of their life. And that's what deacons do. It's one of those jobs that uh, you may be called, if you're a deacon, you may be called to go and help somebody put a you know, take care of their front lawn or, you know, I, I don't know. There's so many things, different things deacons do. There's not a set thing. Okay, you guys get to do these things. Uh, they are servants. And if somebody needs help 
in our church, they usually call Dana. And then Dana calls his deacons. Dana goes. Um, but it does free up, as we heard earlier, the, the, the fellows that are te- doing the teaching uh, in the church because they don't have to go. Well, if you got good deacons, they take a load off of you. If you don't, you're going to end up running your legs off. And that's why I appreciate our deacons because very seldom do I get called to go do something um, and when, when I do, I, I don't mind going, don't get me wrong. Uh, I, I like visiting people and that kind of thing. Um, but we have really good deacons here, and they get there before I do. And I have always appreciated that about the guys here. The truth of Scripture is we are the closest to resembling Jesus, to being imitators of God when we serve. And for you deacons, that should be an encouragement because you are serving people. And, and if you want to look like Jesus, that's the closest you can get, is serving others around you, because that's what Jesus does, did when he was here on this earth to the very point of giving his life. When we serve, when our consideration becomes another before ourself, when we begin to look for the opportunities around us to be a servant to another, in this case, these men are described as some really special individuals. They weren't looking for status or position or power. Instead, they were looking to serve. And that's, a, that's an unusual thing a lot of times because sometimes people aren't looking for the right thing. Deacons are looking to serve. Um, Instead, they were looking to serve. They were assigned to or chosen and appointed to serve tables. It's because it takes special individuals, men who God controls to present their bodies or their lives upon the altar as living sacrifices, willing to give God full reign, doing things God's way. I'm sure if I ask the deacons tonight to give me a... Give me an example of the strangest call you ever went on. Uh, we would probably be able to talk for a while, I would imagine. Um, I don't know, because I'm not the guy doing that. They are. Uh, but it, it doesn't have a, I mean, there's not a pre-assigned thing. Okay, your deacon does this, this, and this. This over here he doesn't do, and this over here he doesn't do. That's not how it works. Somebody needs help. They need somebody to serve to do something for them, um, the deacons go do it. Because um, they don't have a particular list of things that they do and do not do. First um, Timothy chapter 3, 8 through 13, we read it a moment ago, contains even more specific instruction on who the man is to be. They are very special individuals in the church. They are the kind that would agree to be appointed to wait tables to serve. Um, Oftentimes, that's a tough thing to get done in the church, get people to serve the tables. Uh, Roseanne's sitting there smiling at me. Sometimes it's tough to get people who want to come and do that kind of thing. You know, clean up, set up the tables, put up the chairs. We've got some great guys in this church that do that well. Um, And when you don't have them doing that, that makes it really difficult on some other people that really don't need to be doing it. Um, But for this reason, they should be very special individuals to us in the church. They know up front it's a place that will cost. But these men are willing and eager and enthusiastic about this opportunity to serve others, so that the apostles could give themselves, verse 3 and 4, Acts 6, therefore, brothers, pick out from among you seven men of good repute, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we will appoint to this duty, but we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word and What they said pleased the whole gathering, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith 
and of the Holy Spirit, and Philip, and Procurus, and Nicanor, and Tim, Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. Uh, so, being a deacon, special place for a special man, not because it is a position or an elevation of one's status, but because it is the opportunity to be chosen to be a servant. When you're chosen to be a servant because you have the um, prerequisites for being a servant, you enjoy serving others, that's a very special thing. Because as I said earlier, that's the closest to looking like Jesus you can get, is when you are serving others. Uh, to serve God by serving God's people in the business of the church. That's what being a deacon is about. And uh, we just want to express our uh, gratitude to you guys because you are a good bunch of deacons. Uh, I, I know I've been around deacons that weren't as enthusiastic about getting things done. Uh, I appreciate so much Dana as he he serves to lead in that place with the deacons, and he organizes, he does those kind of things. And I appreciate you guys doing that because oftentimes it is one of those positions that does not get a lot of bells and whistles. And, uh, but we do appreciate what you do there. At this time, I want to um, give a charge to Eric and so, Eric, if you'll come on down here and sit in one of these chairs up front. Stephanie, I'm going to want you to come down here in a minute and sit in one of those chairs also. So if you'll just grab one of those, Eric, and sit looking back to the... <laughs> you passed. Yes, he did. Go ahead and put him in the position. The kid knows. You know? I don't know if he was too young to know all that or yet or not. <laughs> you know, charge to the deacon, I want to ask you a few questions. Do you promise to strive to so live that you may honor Christ by your love? And do you promise in the presence of the congregation to accept the responsibility of the office of deacon in this church? And to the best of your knowledge, the ability to discharge all duties of this office. And he says that he will. All right. At this time, I want the deacons, if the deacons will come and gather around Eric. And if you are not a deacon and you would like to come and stand around the deacons, that would be fine also. And Dana is going to come and lead us in a prayer, uh, an ordination prayer. Dr. Father, we come before you and Father, we praise you and thank you for the willing acceptance of the call that Eric has taken. Father, we know that he's your servant and he loves you, Father. And Father, I just ask you to be with him, continue to be with him, strengthen him, continue to give him more of your discernment, Father, to serve your servant. Because Father, we know he has a heart to love you as your command us, you command each one of us to do. To love you with all our strength, our might, Father, and, and the service that he has to love others as well. Father, we thank you for that, and we thank you for the gift that you've given him and his acceptance to carry that out in your church. Father, be with each one of us as deacons, Father, as we come around Eric to encourage him, to teach him, and Father, that we learn from each other, but from you more than anything else. So, Father, I lift this up to you right now. Our Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the joy and the privilege of giving us your servant, Eric, for guiding his life, for his family. Lord, we just thank you that he has committed to being a part of your service in servanthood as a deacon in our church. So, Lord, we just ask that you give him the wisdom and the guidance and the strength. 
strength and courage that he'll need in doing that service. Lord, I continue to pray for my brother Eric, Father, and Lord, I've seen throughout the week time, at times, Lord, when he's at work, and Lord, I know the the uh, spirit, his, your spirit, that he puts forth in everything that he says and does in his relationship with his business and, Lord, and his testimony to this church. I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that I have to, to be a part of this fellowship, Father, with this group of men. And Lord, I'm thankful, Lord, that you brought a brother in, Lord, that is just as enthusiastic as the rest of this group. So, Father, I just pray, Lord, that you put a hedge of protection around him and Stephanie and the family. And, Father, lead and guide them, Father, and that they may grow in wisdom and stature and strength, Father, as, as you would uh, have him to go. That, uh, Lord, he'd carry on the traditions and, and, the, uh, and the teachings of your word in whatever he says and you give you the praise. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the uh, witness of Eric and Stephanie and the positive attitude, Lord, towards uh, our church, family, and just the willingness, Lord, to do the, the task that he's been doing, Lord, uh, just selfish, not non-selfish and, and, and serving, Lord, is his heart, and we are so thankful that he can join the, the brothers uh, in the Deacon uh, community here at Living Baptist Church, Lord, to continue on the, the service that we, we do to the church and the community, Lord, and so bless him, Lord, shine down on his family, and just bless them with uh, peace, joy, encouragement, Lord, and we just pray that uh, he would also be able to delve those out uh, to the community of the church, Lord, as he serves. In your name we pray. Lord, I just pray for Eric, uh, just, Lord, that you just would guide him every step of the way. Um, as a husband, as a father, and as a servant of this church, Lord, Lord, that there will be those times that he struggles, and Lord, I pray that you will direct his eyes back to you, Lord, to, to be in step with you, to be obedient to you, Lord. Um, just help us as men to be there for him as well as he will be there for others, Lord, to, to serve along with him and even to serve him. Lord, we just pray um, and thank you for this calling that you've led him into. And Lord, just bless his efforts and his family in Jesus' name. Gracious Lord, Father, I again praise your name. And Father, I just continue to ask you to be with Eric as he now takes those steps forward to serve you, Father. To accept this calling as your servant. Father, be with Stephanie and encourage her to support Eric. And Father, when there's times when there's questions and doubts, as so um, what we said earlier, to lift his eyes to you, Father. And Father, allow each one of us to continue to be a support for Eric and for Stephanie so that they doesn't ever feel that he's in this all by himself, Father, because that's not what you tell us. You tell us that as we come together to put on your full armor, to stand in the faith, Father, stand firm and encourage and to be a witness for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And Father, I just look there to you now. And it's your name that I pray. Amen. 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 You're setting up chairs for Easter. Stephanie, will you come on up here and sit with Eric? Be sure and be praying for Stephanie in the coming days because Eric will probably get a few phone calls anyways about to run and do this or that and maybe an opportunity uh, comes up and she will maybe be used to that in the evening, you know, with the kids and everything. So be praying for Stephanie because uh, she, she's going to learn how to be a deacon's wife now. And it's... Uh, it's something that I know she'll be good at. She uh, is, a, well, all of you who know her know her. She's a great lady. You can do that, yes. Dickens' wives. Other ladies who like to pray. Hmm. 
<laughs> Somebody want to lead? And thank you, ladies. <laughs> One more charge to the church. Do you, members of this congregation, acknowledge this man as the deacon? In the church, do you promise to encourage and pray for them, both him and Steph, in this new endeavor, uh, to cooperate with him in the fulfillment of the mission of the church, 
If you do, would you so indicate by a good rousing amen? Amen. All right, good, good. Now, where's, uh, where's Caesar? Can you guys come back up here and do a, this will be our uh, dismissal song, if you will. But come by, you guys stay right there. You, <laughs> come by and, and uh, just extend your hand of fellowship to them. If you haven't already been up here, be sure and get down here and encourage them as they get started on this new endeavor in their lives.